Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius on the Chowskas. Today is the 20th of um, AF March 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's afternoon recorded session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, a few of the charts that we looked at uh, this morning just to see how everything's getting along and uh, what could we possibly expect for uh, today? Uh, well, this week's close. Um, so, yep, as always, before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our, um, or actually a quick read through of our risk disclaimer. Now, the content we produce here uh, does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also just um, before we jump in, quick as always, quick mentioning of our GFD uh, YouTube channel to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page which we update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there guys. So um, I believe you can find a lot of useful information here for yourselves. Now then, uh, also just a quick uh, update on what's happening here with the coronavirus. Um, so uh, since this morning, we have an increase of around 2,000 new, uh, new people in, infected globally. Um, well, of course, that's the official statistics, but um, yeah, uh, according to this uh, this one here. Um, but uh, yep, uh, looking at this uh, looking at this chart, looking at this graph here, um, we are kind of a little bit of on a slowdown, I would say. But nevertheless, of course, uh, still, I mean, the the there are still uh, cases arising, um, but, and the situation is still not, let's say, ideal. Um, so let's jump into the markets and let's have a look what's happening here. So the German DAX, now I talked about this one this morning, and uh, basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye, of course, on this downside line, which we managed to break nicely, um, but also I was telling you to keep an eye on this level here, the high of the 17th of March, uh, and that was roughly around the 9,141 zone. So um, you can see that the uh, the price managed to climb a little bit above it, but uh, still kind of failed to remain here, uh, remain above that level and started drifting to the downside. However, still the index is, uh, remains in the positive territory. Um, but uh, the positive uh, aspect here is the fact that it's still balancing um, above this uh, steep downside line. So basically that the fact that the, the steep downside line got broken, uh, we could see this one as a, as a good positive thing. However, of course, the, 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 the day is not finished yet. Uh, we'll also see how the US uh, markets perform. Um, and here, um, basically, um, I will jump into one of the, uh, a few of the US indices but first here with the DAX, we're still keeping the same idea where we need to see a nice good close at least above the uh, 9,141 zone in order to kind of consider um, a larger uh, correction to the upside because again, until as long as we remain trading uh, below this, um, this downside line here, this one taken from the high of the uh, 20th of February, <clears throat> excuse me, we will remain bearish guys so um, in a way we could see this one traveling a little bit higher but if it mm, if it struggles to overcome this downside line then uh, well another round of selling could be possible um, of course ideally in the the positive uh, the positive scenario here or let's say a scenario where we could consider some uh, larger extensions to the upside would be if we would get this uh, a break of this uh, of this downside line here that I mentioned and then a push above the 10,279 zone but again for now, uh, that's a little bit off the table. Uh, let's keep it short and simple. Let's keep an eye on this uh, this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February. We'll, as I said, we'll consider that if we get a nice daily close above the 9,141 level. Uh, the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So um, looking at this one, <clears throat> it opened 
in the positive territory but as you can see it's kind of lo uh, losing its gains however um, not everything is still lost here for the for this index um, yes it could push a little bit higher but as you can see it still remains below this steeper uh, downside line taken from the high of the 5th of March um, so in a way kind of uh, even if it pushes a little bit higher if it struggles to overcome this steep downside line then well another round of selling could be possible but if this downside line gets broken uh, of course we could uh, aim for a bit of a larger correction here to the upside I, but again uh, the mm, the upside as I've mentioned it will be a large just part of a larger correction because we are below this other downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February so Again, for now, guys, um, yes, uh, we could maybe see a bit of a push here to the upside, but um, uh, yeah, we will re remain skeptical about any larger extensions to the upside for now, as long as it remains trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 5th of March. So another, in other words, another round of selling here could be possible. For those who are more on the cautious side, uh, of course, there is a, a even better option here is just basically to wait this one out and wait for a drop below the 18,000. 917 zone which is the uh, current low of this week and uh, then a drop below this level would uh, would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, yep further declines could be possible but as you can see uh, we are still hanging above the uh, 20,000 mark for now uh, let's see if the index can 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 do that um, but uh, if it can then well like I said we could maybe aim for a bit of uh, a bit of upside here but if it struggles to do so and if it starts drifting lower yes aim for the uh, the current lowest point of this week near the 18,917 zone a break of which would confirm a forthcoming lower low uh, Nasdaq 100 now uh, here we are seeing a bit of a slide, a bit of a correction, but it's still holding up slightly better than the uh, the Dow Jones. Um, again, uh, overall, we are still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February. Um, so in a way, we're going to keep an eye on that one because even if we get a push higher, uh, if, if, if the index struggles to overcome this downside line, then, well, I mean, another round of selling could be possible. For those who are more on the cautious side, uh, wait for a drop below the this little territory around here of course below that uh, psychological 7000 mark um, if we do get a drop below that then yes uh, further declines could be possible of course we'll keep an eye on the low the current low of, of this week which is around the 6837 but if it falls below the psychological 7000 territory then yes aim for that uh, low of um, low of this week the current low of this week and uh, but if, if that fails to withhold then yep even further declines could be possible but, but again for now for now uh, we are kind of it is the index is showing some signs of life or should I say the bulls are showing some signs of life um, and uh, maybe just maybe we could see this one drifting a little bit higher and uh, pushing towards this downside line the way you could play this one out for example today of course um, if it doesn't just stick around in the same territory and just closes the week here, if it does have a good move, then what you could do for today is uh, keep your eyes on the yesterday's high, which is around the uh, 7,514 territory. A nice good pop above this could, yep, increase the chances of a possible test of this uh, this downside line that I just mentioned. So, yep, keep your eyes on this little, little high of yesterday around the 7,514 zone. Uh, Brent, oh, sorry, Brent. WTI oil. Now, uh, this morning I talked about this one and um what I was saying that if we get a nice good push back above the 26.08 level, that's the lowest point of 2016, then yep, uh, there could be a possibility for this one to uh, climb maybe higher, go for a larger correction. Uh, the only thing, as you can see, um, the in, uh, the commodity managed to overcome the 27.40 territory as well, but uh, it was more of a false breakout to the upside here, and now we are seeing another round of selling. So again, um, as I've mentioned, this uh this mm, this morning uh first of all of course keep your eyes on the weekly chart let's see where the uh where the and uh, where the commodity where this black liquid will uh close if it closes below this then yep um we could next week we could see further declines maybe even going below uh the current low of today which is not far from that psychological 20 zone uh oh, sorry the low of yesterday which is was uh around the that psychological 20 zone um and uh 
is it yesterday no that's this this week's low so again i do apologize guys that was not yesterday it was on wednesday so there we go managed to finally get this one right um so um the yep the current the, the current lowest point of of this week is roughly around the 20.08 level of course the 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 more a very important level that we're keeping an eye on here is the 26.08 level uh that's the like i said the lowest point of 2016 um now if as i said if it's remain if it remains here if the week closes below this territory then yep further declines could be possible toward me maybe even going back towards this uh psychological 20 zone um a break of which would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep further declines could be possible um on the monthly chart we can see that uh, a nice good potential target here uh could be around the here which is um let me just quickly mark this on the chart around the 17.12 territory which is the uh lowest point of 2001 guys so that's how far we could travel here but again uh for now for now all eyes are on that 26.08 level um usd jpy very quickly on this um so looking at the daily chart uh, forget about the monthly but looking at the daily chart you can see that we had a nice strong move here to the upside yesterday it exploded to exploded higher overcoming this barrier here I talked about uh, this pair previously um, and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this 108.58 level which, uh, which which as you can see acted as a fantastic area of resistance and and yesterday got broken uh, the in uh, the pair traveled further north it tested our other target near the 110.70 uh, 70 zone, 110.70 zone. It overshot it, and uh, uh, it stayed. Yesterday, it stayed above this above this level, and today it continues to kind of trade around this. I mean, even though it did, we did drop here uh, quite drastically. But as you can see, the bulls quickly managed to recover everything and pushed uh, the pair back above this 110.70 territory. So um, for now, the level that was ma managed, the the bulls managed to reach this week here. The high of this week is roughly around the uh, 111.36 zone. So of course, it's not far from the um, the highest point here of February, which is, uh, or in other words, the highest point of this year, which was roughly around the 112.23 zone. So just kind of uh, still have a bit of room here to go to the upside. But on the other hand, we do have uh, this upside support line, which probably uh, would be better to view on a four hour chart. So uh, this is what I'm talking about. So um, this upside support line could in a way continue playing uh, playing out here. And uh, especially if the uh, the rate, for example, right now struggles to um, to overcome this, uh, this high, this current highest point of this week, which is around the 111.36, then we may see a bit of a, a retracement. And as I've mentioned just right now, basically if we stay for the, for the week here, below this level below this 111.36 zone then we could uh, see a bit of correction here to the downside so that's probably something for next week maybe for the beginning of this of the week um, and then yep we could see this one uh, drifting lower towards this upside line and if this upside line holds once again now this is where it could become very exciting could become very exciting for the buyers again and uh, we could see this one probably traveling not only above the 110.70 maybe even overcoming the, the, the highest point here of the 111.36 and then probably hitting the highest point of 2020, which is around the 112.23 zone. So something to consider, something to keep an eye on, and uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But like I said, for now, for today, as I said, if it struggles to overcome this 111.36, then, yep, something to consider like this for next week. Um, GBP JPY. So um, this one continues to climb higher, but is finding very good resistance near this 130.43 zone. And let me just jump into a daily chart very quickly. Here you can see that this is the level that I'm talking about. So this is the lowest point of October 2019. Um, this is where the current holdup is occurring. Um, we are also still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 26th of February. Um, and uh, for now, in a way, according to all the well, technical rules, as long as we remain below this downside line, yes, we will continue targeting the downside. If, um, if of course, this if this breaks, then, well, this is maybe a bit of uh, more uh, fresh air for the bulls, and we could see them pushing the pair even further north, maybe even going towards this 200 EMA on the 4-hour chart. For now, 
Um, it is where it is. Uh, we are currently getting a hold up here near the 130.43. Um, I'm not saying that this is going to be a reversal straight away to the downside. Like I said, it could travel a little bit higher. It could test this downside line. But if it struggles to overcome this downside line, then we could see another round of selling. But here in this situation, probably uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, the way you could play this one out is, uh, well, let me just quickly uh, draw this one very quickly here, guys. You could, in a way, keep your eyes on this level here, the 128.47, so roughly around there, um, in a way, because if it travels higher, tests the down the downside line, starts drop, dropping lower, um, in a way, it could uh, drift a little bit to the downside, get a hold up somewhere here, and then rebound and push higher again. So that's why if it breaks below this again, below this 128.47 level, now this is where uh, it could become very interesting for the sellers. So that's why uh, this is, as I said, this is the more kind of cautious uh, area after which, after a break of which, we could um, aim for uh, further declines. Uh, for now, we are kind of, let's say, just observing this one, and we want to see what it wants to do. We want to see what it wants to do with this downside line. Uh, GBPUSD. Uh, so this one, um, I've talked about this one this morning, and uh, basically I was telling you guys to keep a close close eye on this downside line taken from the high of the 11th of March. As you can see, we've managed to overcome this. Uh, we managed to shoot above it, and uh, we managed to test this level here, the 1.1884 zone. So, oh, no, sorry, 1.1880 zone, which was, um, as I've showed you uh, in my previous videos, uh, this is the level it is basically. This is the um, that low of one of the months where which one was it? Just bear with me one moment. That's the lowest point of May. Uh, lowest point of May 1985. So 1985, guys. Uh, lowest point of May. That's what we managed to test today. Um, it didn't overshoot it. Um, the pair remained below it, and not even that. It actually drifted uh, back south, back below this downside line. However, as you can see now, there we are. We are having a bit of a a mess here. I would say uh, this downside line is getting violated. So uh, probably this uh, the significance of this downside line is now falling. So how we could play this one out is remove the downside line and now mainly focus on this 1.1880 territory because if by any chance the week closes back above the 1.1880 or even better the 1.1950 zone well i mean we could see maybe a bit of uh, upside going into next week here but uh, for now this is a very critical key level the 1.1950 is the low uh, is near the lows of um, 2019 and 2016 guys so something to keep in mind something to consider um, and yep like i said keep this idea in mind where we could see another round of selling here potentially um, especially if it stays below this 1.1880 1.1950 territory um, AUD USD so um, here you can see that the reversal is happening a little bit earlier um, the level here that I, I wanted to mention of course is this 0 0.6009 level um, roughly around there uh, that's the mm, the lowest point and probably I need to jump in uh, uh, there we go not, not enough uh, data here on the on the screen. So um, that's basically the lowest point of uh, 2008, guys. So uh, these, this is the crisis level. So we managed to kind of uh, overcome it. Um, and uh, the big question here is, can we stay below the 0 0.6009 uh, territory? So if we, if we can, then well, further declines could be possible. Uh, but if it struggles to do so, if it's by any chance climbs back above the 0 0.6009 uh, 0 .6 level, then maybe just maybe we could see a bit of a, a more a bit more upside here uh, and uh, more, a bit more correction. For now, it is where it is. Um, it is still below it, so we are more bearish than bullish and um, especially looking at this price action right now as where you can see that the pair did tr did have an attempt to, tr to climb today to the upside, but as you can see now, the bears are taking control, taking the steering wheel and driving this one lower. For those who are more on the cautious side, just probably sit this one out and wait for a drop below the 0 0.5509 level and then target uh, some lower levels. 
uh, for, uh, for those who are more on the a little bit on the riskier side, what you could do here uh, is keep your eyes on this little upside support line. Um, I know I do understand it's a little bit tentative, but um, still, nevertheless, we could keep an eye on this one because if this gets broken and the uh, the rate starts falling uh, somewhere below here, below this uh, little territory, um, this little intraday swing low um, of yesterday, and then this uh, around the 0 0.5716. If we get a drop below this, then yep, uh, further declines could be possible. We could then aim for the uh, the low of yesterday. Um, and uh, yep, uh, the, the low of yesterday is roughly around the 0 0.5509 level. So keep your eyes on that one, guys. Um, as I said, with the upside, pretty straightforward. We need to see a push above the 0 0.6009 uh, level, and then we will aim for a bit of a larger correction to the upside. And finally, Euro USD. Um, so... This is what I talked about this morning, basically, and uh, what I was saying that if we get a push higher, uh, we may even overshoot this key area of resistance, but um, if still we may see a bit of a false breakout here, which we've managed to get exactly, and uh, now you can see that the pair is drifting back down. Um, it's back, falling back below the 0. Uh, 1.07 uh, 1 territory. Um, this morning I was look, I was showing you the daily chart and what I was saying that in a way um, if it struggles, if it finds it difficult to push above this territory here, this this resistance zone, then we may see a bit of a retracement here where the, probably the rate could end up being somewhere around this 1.07 level. Um, what I was mentioning as well that we're not probably going to uh, end up moving all the way here back towards this 1.0650 territory unless something really mm, drastic will come out today in term, in the news or what kind of some sort of headline which could shaken up a little bit here uh, where which could push the US dollar uh, even uh, let's say higher um, but the, the US dollar today is kind of a little bit on a, on a decline but um, uh, still uh, still here, you can see uh, the um, the the pair is balancing above this uh, this lowest point of this week, which is roughly around the 1.0650. Um, for now, we will, like I said, we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll keep an eye on this territory, and uh, yep, uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, but probably, like I said, it might end up the day somewhere around here, around this 1.07 territory. So keep your eyes on this one. But by if by any chance, by any chance, if it travels back above this 1.0777 territory or even 1.08 zone then well I mean we could go for a bit of a, a larger correction to the upside next week something to keep in mind guys so yep keep your eyes on this this highlighted territory here okay guys I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for sticking around with me for this week um, thank you very much for your patience guys and as I said uh, previously uh, hope all this ends soon and uh, we, we can get back to normal to our live uh, stream but for now unfortunately uh, we have to run this I have to run this uh, as a recorded session so um, yep guys straight away apologies for that uh, but yeah like, like I said I, I thank you very much for your patience and uh, thank you very much for your support so have a wonderful weekend everyone um, and I'll see you on Monday yep check out my video uh, my yep, espresso video on Monday as, as always 7 o'clock a little bit after 7 probably uh, the recording is going to be a recorded uh, session so yep on Monday uh, after 7 o'clock GMT time my traders espresso yep I'll see you then guys and thank you very much stay safe <laughs>